Our Parsha has a census. It talks about the family. Hashem counts the Jews many times in the Bible. One of them is in our Parsha, and it says, Amishal counts each, each person based on their family. Okay. However, there's another census in the beginning of the Parsha, in the beginning of the book of Bamibar, that counts Am Yisrael differently. It counts Am Yisrael in terms of three things. In terms of the Mishpechotam, their family, the Veit Avotam, in terms of their, their connection to their, their forefathers, the, their patrilineal descent, and also the Gul Gilotam. And that means themselves, their heads, literally. And so in our Parsha, the reason why they omitted the Beit Avotam and the Gul Gilotam, I heard Rabbi Riskin share this. He says that Amishra went to a lower level. And that's why they sinned uh, around that time in this Parsha with Bilam and Balak and all that. <laughs> um, they went to a lower level. And the reason why they did that, and it's, it's brought to, it's highlighted in the fact that the Beit Avotam and Gul Gilotam is not mentioned, is the fact that they forgot their connection. They, they had their Judaism from home, from their Mishpacha. But they, didn't, they weren't connected, they weren't plugged in in terms of their own personal connection, Gul Gilotam, their heads. And they weren't plugged in in terms of going way back, Levita to the, to, the, to the patriarchs and matriarchs, to the past. And it's an important lesson um, for us. It, we, we all, a lot of us got uh, received Jew, Jewish values at, the home, at our homes. And that's really important. But it's, it's extremely important to develop those other two connections, not just, what we, not just the residual effect of what we received at home, but developing our own personal connection, Gul Gilotam, their heads, and also delving backwards to the tradition from many years ago before our parents came into the world and, and reading the text and connecting Levit Avotam. If we do that, we can protect ourselves from falling into sin similar to what's mentioned in our parasha. Listen a quick dwar on a question that everybody asks on our parasha. Um, Pinchas stood up and uh, there was two, two, two people fornicating in public. He got up, he, he stabbed them, killed them in public. And Hashem says, I'm going to give you a covenant of peace due to the fact that you did that. <laughs> so today, if someone gets a pre, uh, Nobel Peace Prize, it's not usually because they came up and stabbed somebody in public. So the question is, why is he getting this peace prize, a covenant of peace? So one explanation says that sometimes you need to stand up for certain inju injustices. And through that, you can foster peace in the world. I saw another explanation, though, that I think answers more... more answers more issues connected to this, and it's from Naftali Tfiyuda Berlin. He says that Pinchas might have done an act of zealotry, and sometimes that's needed, but Hashem blessed him not as a reward, but as a reminder. Don't get taken away in your zealotry. This is a, this is a covenant of peace that you don't go taken away, with, you don't, you don't go, go overboard with it. Sometimes you find that in our lives. It's important to stand up for what's right and to fight for what's right, but if it takes over you and you're not in control of that zealotry, and you can sometimes turn into what you're actually fighting against. And today is the fast of the 17th of Tammuz, and every, most people know that we fast because something happened with the temple, the, the walls were breached. But many people don't know that there was, a, the, there was five calamities that happened on this day. The first one happened in biblical times. Moshe came down from the mountain, Mount Sinai, after 40 days, saw all of Am Yisrael serving the, uh, the Egel, the calf, he broke the tablets. On the day that they broke the tablets was the 17th of Tammuz, 40 days after the 6th of Sivan. So what's the message behind this? There's a real, I feel like there's a very powerful message behind the breaking of the tablets based on what's, based on what's expressed in later tradition. It says Moses, when he broke it, they took the, those broken tablets and they brought them together in the ark with the new tablets. And in the ark, you had the new tablets the, the whole ones and the broken ones, one next to each other. And the sages say, why did this happen? And the message is that, well, I want these people to see me too. The message is that Hashem brings everybody in, not just those who are whole, but those who are broken too. And they're both in Hashem's ark. And it's an important lesson, something to remember. A lot of times in our lives, we're not always up. You're down, maybe something failed, maybe you lost somebody and you're in a lot of pain. Maybe uh, something went wrong at work and you feel really low about yourself or you see somebody, they're losing and they're not doing well. And maybe there's this tendency to sometimes look at them in a different way. The lesson is that Hashem accepts everybody, the broken and the whole, equally. And the Rebbe of Kutz says, and I'll conclude with this, Rebbe Kutz says, there's nothing more whole than a broken heart. 
maybe uh, maybe the reason behind that is through the brokenness, sometimes you can get even to higher levels. 